First this hour, new information this week about the death of Dexter Berry. The Jacksonville man died after he spent a couple of days in the Duval County Jail on a misdemeanor charge. Records show Barry repeatedly told police and jail officials he needed to take his anti-rejection meds to manage his heart transplant, but he never got those pills. Now it has emerged that the jail ordered the medication, but they never made it to the jail in time. This reporting from the Jacks Trib. Jacksonville attorney Andrew Bondarud is representing Barry's family and joins us now in studio. Andrew, good to see you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And what are your questions about this story? Give us a call, 549-2937. Emails to firstcoastconnect at wjct.org. Tweets to at Melissa in Jacks. Facebook open. So, Andrew, as the tributary has been reporting, uh, Mr. Berry's anti-rejection medications were ordered after he pleaded and begged for them, according to records, but they never got delivered to the jail until after he was released. Tell us more about this new evidence. Well, it's such a, uh, a terrible excuse for health care at the Duval County Jail. Mr. Berry told absolutely everybody who would, who would listen to him that he has a serious medical need. He has this need for uh, immunosuppressant medication. He told the arresting officer. He told... Um, the intake nurse, he told everyone, and the jail had a non-delegable duty to provide those medications to him, and, and they failed. And there is simply no excuse. There is no excuse for the jail not to have provided uh, that medication to him. Now, three days after he was released from jail, Mr. Berry died from cardiac arrest caused by an acute rejection of the heart. Is it your contention as his family's attorney that his death was directly attributable to being denied his meds? I think there's no question. Um, Mr. Berry had uh, the heart transplant surgery in October of 2020. And um, thereafter, he was uh, doing wonderfully. And he had regular checkups at his doctor. And as recently as April of 2022, um, there was a biopsy of his transplanted heart that reflected that the heart was uh, in outstanding condition. It was stable. Mr. Berry uh, was doing everything he needed to do to live as normal a life as possible. Um, and, and then he was arrested. And, and there's no question in my mind, and I think the, the medical literature out there uh, corroborates this, uh, that uh, the lapse of, of two days, lapse in two days of medication is absolutely the principal cause of death uh, of Mr. Berry. And it just doesn't stand to reason that Mr. Berry, who you can see on video, he's animated, he's healthy, he goes into the jail, and then when he gets back, when he gets out, he drops dead uh, for armor or for the jail to suggest that the jail had nothing to do with that is just, uh, it's outrageous, and it doesn't stand to reason. It's 5492937. So tell us more than about what the new reporting from the TRIB is showing, that apparently a nurse at the jail did try to get his medication for him, but it didn't get there in time. Well, that's right. I, I, think, um, I think it raises more questions than answers. Uh, we do have the medical records, which reflect that on the day that Mr. Berry was admitted to the jail, um, the nurse documented the need for medication, documented clinical history of heart transplant, uh, confirmed the medications with his pharmacy, and there is absolutely no excuse for the medical team at the jail not to have provided the medications. If they are so ill-equipped to provide uh, for his health care while he's in the jail, they should not have taken custody of him at the jail. Now, Armor Correctional Health Services is the for-profit company that manages the Duval Jail's health care services. Uh, JSO isn't commenting on this investigation, but they are looking at this company. What do we know about this company? The, the, in light of these revelations, they're now investigating this company, is there, the understanding. There are so many questions that need to be answered. 
uh, not only about this company, but also about the process that led to this company uh, being the healthcare services provider at the jail. Um, this company, uh, you know, it's, it's not like I'm super smart or anything. I did what anyone would do when they hear of a company that they've never heard of before. You Google them. If you Google this company, you will see an absolute abysmal wake of destruction that this company has left behind it um, all over the place. They were run out of town by the state of New York, by the state of Virginia. They were prosecuted criminally in Wisconsin, which is extraordinary. The district attorney up there in Milwaukee said it's extraordinary. Why is it extraordinary? Well, it's, it's not common that you have a corporate criminal defendant, uh, particularly a corporate criminal defendant in state court who's a government contractor who is charged in connection with an inmate's death. And this company was convicted not only of seven misdemeanor crimes of dishonesty, but also a felony uh, related to their neglect of an inmate there. And on the heels of that, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office awarded this company a $98 million no-bid contract. No bid, no competition whatsoever, uh, because it was exempt under the municipal code here. And to be clear, this was under the previous sheriff, not the current sheriff. <clears throat> That's correct. So the original contract was signed in 2017. Uh, also, no bid, but the company had a lobbyist, a lobbyist who is well known. Um, Who's that? And this has not been reported on. Tony Baselli was lobbying on behalf of this company. Really? Really. He was registered as a lobbyist for Armor Correctional Health Services under his given name, Don Baselli. And you can see his email address in the lobbyist registration. And through July of 2022, there are records reflecting Tony Baselli being present at operational meetings between the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and Armor Correctional Health Services, which, again, what on earth is going on at the jail? Tony Baselli, of course, uh, was recently inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. Uh, he has had a career as a lobbyist. Has Baselli commented to you or anyone involved with this case? We'll reach out to him, but he has not. This is new information. That's correct. It's well, it's it has not been reported, but it is uh, it is in the public records and it is in the public domain. Uh, if you if you search for him and his lobbyist registration, uh, which also lapsed several years ago. Um, he has not commented, uh, but I do question, you know, football player, outstanding, uh, the pride of Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, uh, involved in inmate correctional health care. Uh, I'm going to need to learn a little bit more about that. What, what are his qualifications to be invited into a meeting? You know, there he is communicating, you know, with his Gmail account uh, about, uh, this kind of stuff. It, was this when Baselli was affiliated with the lobbying firm Ballard Partners? It, it may have been several years ago. Um, but uh, again, uh, as recently as summer of 2022, um, he, is, uh, he is neck deep in, um, in the operations of uh, provision of health services at the Duval County Jail.